Good morning, everybody. Um, uh, actually, first, I'm going to make an apology to this lady and anybody else who's reliant on uh, her interpreting uh, my babble. Uh, I do tend to talk really, really quickly, and I'll try my best to, um, to go a little bit uh, more slowly. But uh, if I'm going too fast, uh, then uh, feel free to find me uh, later on, and I'll have another go at explaining what I'm about to fire at you. Um, so, but hey, maybe you're a super fast signer. <laughs> uh, okay, so, um, so when the guys first got in touch with me about uh, today's event and uh, sent me an email and said, okay, Dan, so we're doing this conference and it's going to be around zombies and what zombies can teach the arts was, was how our conversation started. And, and that was really exciting because actually at that time on my uh, iPad for a, a presentation that I was putting together for uh, a bunch of European arts organizations, I had this um, picture um, of, of Frankenstein. Now for any uh, major zombie heads, I appreciate that Frankenstein isn't actually a zombie. <laughs> okay, I know that. Technically speaking, he's not a zombie. But... <coughs> what? Yeah, 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 whatever. <coughs> you, know what I'm, you know what I'm talking about. <coughs> but, but, uh, he is, I think, Frankenstein's monster <laughs> is, however, I think, a fully paid up member of Team Undead. So I hope you're going to allow me just to sort of stretch things a little and squeeze him in here because there's a reason why I want him to be, uh, to be part of things. So um, Frankenstein's monster, uh, a body made up of uh, stolen and uh, borrowed bits and pieces from other dead bodies, crudely stitched together uh, and shocked into life uh, with uh, energy from uh, some outside creator. That's about as good a description of the arts establishment in the 21st century as I think you'll find, <laughs> okay? And that's why I use him. Because he, for me, this guy is where we are all right now. So, uh, and I was also asked today to, to come up with sort of five questions or provocations uh, around this topic. So this is my, my first one. So if we're saying, what can zombies teach the arts, then my first question is, well, actually, who's the zombie? Because uh, if zombies have any kind of self-awareness, then I would suggest the first thing they can maybe teach us is to be a bit reflective and recognize that actually it's kind of us guys. Sorry, it's a, it's a little bit dark, uh, but this is Shakespeare, so we're moving from one dead guy onto another dead guy. Uh, and he, I think, is a great illustration uh, as well because Shakespeare, who was kicking around uh, the sort of uh, um, plague-infested streets of London 500 years ago, is not the Shakespeare that we all talk about now. They're not the same thing. Okay, the Shakespeare who was kicking around, and I know that you, you guys will know this anyway, the Shakespeare who was kicking around then was uh, making populist theatre, uh, often in run-down theatres which they could dismantle and pick up and move elsewhere for the masses, on the cheap, uh, taking pops at the establishment whilst he did it. That's not who we introduce uh, as Shakespeare these days. Shakespeare that we talk about since the 18th century when we decided we kind of liked him again, uh, is the founder of modern English arts and literature. He's this great giant and genius. But of course, he's only a giant and genius because of the rules that we decided we want to put in place that he then represents. If you use another set of rules, he's just some guy. And he's all right, I'm not a big fan, I have to say. Some of the stuff he wrote was really, really nice. I think other bits, I can kind of take it or leave it. And there were lots of other guys writing around at the time uh, who were as good and uh, often frequently better. So. Um, if, if Frankenstein's monster is kind of a zombie, then I'd say this guy's a phantom. Okay, he's, no, he's this one that we sort of present to people and he, he never actually existed. So, it, for the question, this is kind of a two-part question, is Shakespeare really Shakespeare? Well, for my money, no, he's not. Is it, in fact, Taylor Swift? And, and I'm going to put to you today that actually, yes, it is Taylor Swift. In fact, they are one and the same person, separated only by an inconvenient 500 years. Because actually, they're doing and saying exactly the same thing, um, unless there's something that you're trying to protect in how you educate and control people, which, of course, is uh, largely what the arts is all about. My third question, uh, mainly because I just wanted to put this image up, so I just found this image and thought, <coughs> let's find a question around that. 
Um, and uh, so what this makes me think of is that in the 21st century, now that we have technologies which allow us to make cultural products, art events, whatever we call them, um, with, with no training, uh, you, can, you can decide today that you want to make something powerful and you can make it. Uh, you can distribute it to millions of people and if those people like it, you'll get all the hits that you need on Twitter or YouTube, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and it doesn't have to be something that you stand in front of in an institution for 20 minutes, whatever the respectable amount of time is you're meant to give aside to a Rothko or whatever it is that we're, that we're looking at. You can do it in 10 seconds. Do it for 30 seconds and YouTube will pay you. But it doesn't really matter how long it takes to make it, who makes it, and how long it takes to consume it. Um, so, so then my question with that then is, well, how long is amazing? How long does it have to be? Where does it have to happen? What does it have to be in order to be important? Is that five minutes? I'm not talking fast enough. I'll have to get quicker. So if you can spare me one more minute, I'll fly through these, these last two. Um, so in the 21st century, with an arts establishment uh, rotting and decayed and made up of dead parts that we stole from other things, that we shock every now and again with funding to try and keep the damn thing going, uh, when you don't need skills or training or anything that we recognize as being the kind of key ingredients uh, to importance, to make things which are meaningful and beautiful, then art, as far as we knew it, as far as I'm concerned, is dead. Gone. No longer exists. So then my question to you is, where were you when art died? Um, I know, well, actually, no, I don't know. I've thought about this a lot. I don't know where I was when art died, but I know that I was in City Racing Gallery in 1994 and saw an incredible installation, which was essentially a, a band set up with everything turned up on full, and the whole room hummed with the electricity of amps. And as you walked around on the floor, the guitar strings kind of vibrated slightly, and the feedback was just starting to whisper around the room, but never quite kicked off. Um, so for me, it wasn't dead then but I'm not quite sure when it did die. And of course, it would be different for all of you because art's an abstract thing. So it didn't all die for all of us Wednesday last week. It died, it, for some of you, it might have died before you were even born. I don't know, you'll have to work that out for yourself. But uh, yeah, and, and then my very last question, um, and this is kind of a tool actually, I use this question an awful lot um, and I'm going to give it to you as like an early Christmas present today because it's one of the best questions that I've ever found uh, and I often put uh, in between the and point fucking because it makes it, if you really need it to really get some grit you can whack that in there but I thought I wouldn't put it on my slide uh, for today, we'll, we'll, we'll go for the clean version. Um, and what I like about this question is that it really cuts like a, like a scalpel right to the heart of any debate and anything that you're trying to examine and work out what it is and how you feel about it. What's the point is one of those questions that just goes bam right in there and, and you can use it whenever you like. I would encourage you to use it at every opportunity, uh, maybe across a dinner table at a date, uh, maybe at your lecturer, uh, maybe the next time you're trying to work out um, where your work is going to go. And what's great about this question is that things that you think are absolutely rock solid will crumble when you fire this question at them. And things that you can't work out and can't find the truth in will sometimes just stand up and become incredibly clear as soon as you ask them this question. And that's probably <laughs> the point at which I should end. And, uh, and obviously, I'm looking forward to talking to all of you later on. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dan.